Okay, find all vertical asymptotes of x over x squared minus 4. Then at each vertical asymptote, find the one-sided limits. How do we find the vertical asymptotes of this function? So now that you're actually given a function you know, with an expression, how would you go about finding the vertical asymptotes? Now you might already have an idea of how you would do that. Let the denominator equal zero. Okay, so why are we letting the denominator equal zero? Let's kind of see. You, know, you may have heard that before, set so the denominator equal to zero to get the vertical asymptotes. right here if we go back why does that make sense so first of all a vertical asymptote is a value of or it's a vertical line but x equals a is a vertical asymptote as long as what one of these two limits is infinite so i want an infinite limit but then if i look at this master strategy i see that i get infinite limits from what i get infinite limits from expressions that are like non-zero over zero so i know that if i have a non-zero number over zero that will always lead to infinite limits and infinite limits mean vertical asymptotes so that's why denominator equals zero was kind of the strategy they gave you now, we are going to see some examples where denominator equals zero does not give you a vertical asymptote, right? So what I'm gonna say here is, oops. I'm gonna say to find candidate vertical asymptotes. I don't know that they're vertical asymptotes quite just yet. So to find candidate vertical asymptotes. set denominator to zero. Okay, so then we get obviously two candidates, right? Plus two and minus two. Now, how do we actually know that these give vertical asymptotes? So like I just said, what type of expression gives you an infinite limit, which in turn gives you a vertical asymptote? What type of expression? Non-zero number over zero, good. So if I were to plug in x equals negative two and two back into the original function, if I get non-zero over zero, that's good. That means the one-sided limits are um, infinite. And that means that we have vertical asymptotes. So in this case, obviously, we do get that. So let's just make a note of that. So direct substitution of x equals negative 2 or x equals 2 into f of x gives non-zero over 0. So that means all these one-sided limits, they're infinite, right? At negative two and two, the left and right limit at negative two, the left and right limit at two, they're both, um, everything is infinite. Okay, good. So we have two vertical asymptotes. And notice that I'm saying that x equals 2 and x equals negative 2 are vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are lines. So when you identify them, you should identify them by equations, right? The equation of a vertical line is always of the form x equals something. Okay, so that's kind of the easy part, right? I mean, set the denominator equal to zero, look at your vertical, uh, get your vertical asymptotes. But now the next part is, okay, at each vertical asymptote, actually find those one set limits. You know, which infinities are they? Okay, so now let's do that. So let's look at um, x equals negative two first. So the idea here is I want 
the left limit and the right limit. Let's actually just write out what the function is. Now, we already know that both of these limits are infinite, right? Because direct substitution gives you non-zero over zero, right? Direct substitution gives non-zero over zero. So both limits are infinite. I might need to put that down here. Whoops. Okay, so for now, I'm going to write here um, infinity. Now, it could be plus, it could be minus. I don't know what type of infinity is it is yet. So all we have to do, once you know it's infinite, all you have to do is figure out, is it positive or is it negative? So I'm going to put this symbol here. So this is a division bar. This is a fraction bar. It's not a minus sign. It's actually just a fraction bar. So let's do a sign analysis of numerator and denominator. So... The numerator is going to be kind of the easy part. Notice if I look at the numerator, if I plug in x equals negative 2, it doesn't matter which limit I'm looking at. If I plug in x equals negative 2, the numerator is just negative 2, right? And that's a negative number in both cases. So that we get from direct substitution. The numerator is always the easy part, because if it really is non-zero, it's just, that's it. That's the number. Okay. The denominator is always the little, little bit tricky. Why is the denominator tricky? Because if the denominator is really giving you zero, is zero a positive number? No. Is zero a negative number? No. So there's some ambiguity. And that's where it really depends on whether you're coming from the left or the right. So let's look at this very carefully in the first one. X is going to negative two from the left side, right? So whatever I'm going to write here, I have to kind of take into account, right? X is less than negative two, right? X is slightly smaller than negative two, but close to negative two. Right there over here. X is close to negative two and X is less than negative two. So what can you say about X squared minus four in that case? Choose a test point. Use a test point that is close to negative two, but less than negative two. So denominator will be positive. I think you're right, Caleb, right? If let's choose like negative 2.01, right? That's less than negative two, but still close. So negative 2.01, if I plug that into the denominator, I get negative 2.01 squared minus four, which actually ends up being a positive number. So. I'm going to write here zero positive. So the denominator goes to zero, but x squared minus four is positive. Now, so overall, what does that mean? If the numerator is negative two, and the denominator is always positive, that's negative over positive. Isn't this just end behavior? This is not end behavior. So if you've heard the term end behavior, end behavior is as x goes to infinity or as x goes to negative infinity. That's not what we're doing. x going to negative infinity or minus infinity will be on Tuesday's lecture. Today we're talking about when the limit itself is infinite, not when the x is going to infinity. And so Nishika says, would it just be negative infinity? That's correct, right? The numerator is negative, the bottom is positive, so therefore, I just get negative infinity for the whole thing. Now, obviously for the right side, we have something very, very similar, right? Let me just put a little bit of space here. It's a bit easier to read.
So now similarly, if I'm approaching negative two from the right side, so what can I say? X is close to now positive two, sorry, positive two. X is still close to negative two, but now it's bigger than negative two, right? Because it's approaching from the right side. So think about X squared minus four. So what is the sign of X squared minus four? If X is a little bit bigger than negative two, what would you say about X squared minus four, the denominator? Positive, right? Because I can think of, is it positive? Wait a second. What's a, what's a good test point? Wouldn't negative 1.99 be a good test point? Right, yeah, square that and then subtract four. Is that a negative number or a positive number? That's a negative number, right. So I'm gonna write here, the denominator goes to zero, but it stays negative. Now overall, now we have positive, right? Because if the numerator is negative two, the denominator is negative. So therefore I get positive infinity for my limit, negative over negative. Okay, so I'll leave the rest up to you. So X equals two, then you also have to do, and I'll just kind of leave that up to you. It's done very similarly, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna to get to other examples. Uh, it turns out that we again get negative infinity and positive infinity for the left and right. Um, don't think that the infinities are always gonna be opposite. They're, they don't have to be opposite, am I right? Remember, always think about that very first example we did with the graph. You really can get anything you want, right? I mean, the you can get different infinities on the on to the two sides. You get the same infinity on both sides, right? So don't always think that you're going to get always opposite infinities.